Hello dear viewers, it's George from Ireland. So um, welcome to uh, me, <laughs> welcome to this place where I am, Wimbledon, London. And behind me is the house of um, Joseph Toynbee, who was born in 1815 and died in um, 1866, uh, if memory serves. Uh, anyway, and so he was in his lifetime a world expert otologist, and that's to say on the ear, and dissected hundreds of ears and was the author of many publications in scholarly journals about the human ear. So he's born in Lincolnshire um, into a um, family of landed gentry. They didn't actually have a title, but they were recognized as quite major landholders in that, in that area. He was one of 15 children. So he went to um, uh, school in, in, in Norwich, and later he came to London um, at the age of 17, and he worked at Westminster General Dispensary. The dispensary was not just a, a um, uh, pharmacy, it was suggested days, was, it was a clinic as well. Um, doctors usually didn't go to university as such um, in the early 19th century. They went to a hospital study there and then the Hunterian med Medical School as in it was founded by someone with the name Hunter. So he qualified as a doctor um, and he married and he and his good wife were blessed with nine children, uh, if, if memory doesn't play me false. Uh, anyway, it's his son um, uh, Arnold Toynbee um, was an economic historian, founder of Toynbee Hall in East London. Um, trying to better the lot of uh, Hoi Poloi, Toynbee Hall, where Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi stayed in the 1930s. But don't let that put you off. Despite Gandhi staying there, it's still a worthy cause. So as you can see that um, Joseph Toynbee, he uh, did not do badly financially and of his medical practice. Um, and uh, St Mary's Hospital was founded whilst he was a practitioner and he was there. He used to dissect ears and give lectures to uh, doctors on the human ear. Um, he was someone who was fascinated with tinnitus. Tinnitus, in case you don't know, um, or tinnitus, I've heard it pronounced. I don't know the correct accentuation, because um, I've got it. But anyway, um, it's this sort of ringing in the ear, like, like lifelong. Actually, at, at night, if you're silent, nothing else is going on, then you might hear it a bit more. So it's the same word in, in Romanian and um, German, I've discovered, from people who've got it. And some people say that it drives them to suicide or whatever. It, often you don't get it to your teens. If you've been firing guns without ear defenders, then that can bring it on, for example. So he looked at different parts of the ears. Could he, could he um, cure ears? He invented ear trumpets and things like that. So um, that was him. He treated uh, members of the royal family, including Queen Victoria. So he lived here in Wimbledon and um, he was experimenting with chloroform and other things, um, experiment on himself, not a very bright idea, and he accidentally killed himself um, at the age of 49. So he's buried in St Mary's Church, Wimbledon, which is not very far from here. Uh, yeah, so uh, his, uh, a lot of his children were, were um, very distinguished. Um, his, his daughter Grace uh, was an expert on bacteria, and uh, there were very few female bacteriologists in the late 19th century. Um, and uh, one of his sons was an academic on ancient languages, I can't remember the other one did, besides Arnold, probably the most famous. And he's an ascendant of that um, vile um, left-wing Harridan, uh, what's her name, um, uh, Toynbee, Polly Toynbee, who's um, a Guardian Easter, um, uh, authoress of some of the most heinous articles there, uh, professing her concern for the poor, never give him a penny herself or complaining about the rich owning too many houses she can afford a holiday house in Italy by the way so it doesn't doesn't obviously um, uh, practice what she preaches and I had the grave misfortune to work with a descendant of this man uh, Mrs Rachel Fletcher anyway complete arch bitch of the same of the same um, ilk as her sister Polly but uh, this guy I've got to hand it to him he was a humanitarian he did a lot of good for the race he relieved a lot of suffering um, so he was a physician who was in it for the right reasons. Um, anyway, and the, the um, building later became a clinic for cancer patients, part of Nuffield Health, as in Lord Nuffield, um, original name William Morris. He was a self-made multi-millionaire, billionaire in today's terms, and gave away almost all his wealth, including to things like Nuffield Health. So on to a bit about William Morris. Um, uh, he was born somewhere in the English Midlands, but moved to Oxford as a baby, and then worked in a bicycle repair shop, and then set up his own bike shop, and then started manufacturing automobiles, more or less, well, by hand, before, before assembly lines came on stream, and, and became very wealthy of that. You may have heard the Morris Mine and the Morris Oxford, all from him, s s set up his car factory in Cowley, on the edge of Oxford. Um, so, uh, William Morris, he never went to university himself, but he donated an awful lot of money to Oxford University, and that's why there is um, Nuffield College, a postgraduate college, built in the 1950s, um, near the railway station in Oxford, 
and so he gave a long way to, to um, medical and educational causes. Lord Nuffield died in the 1960s. He took his name from the village in Oxfordshire where he had um, his main residence. Um, and uh, yeah, he was a fantastic philanthropist and his benefactions were not limited to this country. He was also someone who was relatively modest and he said, there's no point in buying too many clothes, I can only wear one suit at a time. And you can visit his house, Nuffield House, in the village of Nuffield, Oxfordshire. So a true humanitarian, a bit like um, this guy, Joseph Toynbee. But then again, if Joseph Toynbee really cared about relieving suffering, he could have given away a bit more of his wealth to the needy. You see how big it was. But he did want to preserve um, Wimbledon Common for the public. There were thoughts of, you know, selling it off, of making it private, and then the public wouldn't have so much recreation grounds. We've got to remember, when he moved in the mid-19th century, Wimbledon really was the edge of London. And so uh, open countryside was, was not very far away. I mean, strictly speaking, this wasn't even London till about 1885, um, when uh, Greater London was created. This was taken out of the county of Surrey and then put into London, because London was like 85 boroughs, boroughs being a, a borough being a town. Some of them were in Surrey, that's South West London, some of them were in Kent, South East London, north of the river, almost all of that was Middlesex, a bit the very northeast of London was Essex. But this was ridiculous because there are like 85 boroughs or towns not really coordinating with the city of London, which is the area around um, St Paul's Cathedral, or the city of Westminster, as in around Westminster Abbey. So they amalgamated them all, just called it Greater London. And by the way, that, um, that uh, Wimbledon Common I mentioned is just over there. You may have heard of the Wombles of Wimbledon, which is a children's television series from the 1970s and 1980s. It's set there with these um, curious creatures who look like sort of anteaters standing up who are going around playing songs. Remember You're a Womble, which is very well on top, top of the pops, presented by the late and unlamented Sir Jimmy Savile. Um, so uh, these, are, these are just fictive creatures. I hate to break it to you. Um, anyway, so that is um, uh, Joseph Toynbee, and I might go and see his grave a little bit later. So um, I'm glad that it's been, his house is being used for a medical cause to this day, trying to preserve life and trying to improve quality of life, uh, because obviously that is what this good man would have uh, wanted. Uh, they're, they're the only family I've ever heard of the surname Toynbee, and spelling it with a double E at the end, not a Y, as one might have anticipated. So thank you so much for watching my channel, and make sure you subscribe on Patreon to get access to thousands of uh, videos and uh, articles behind the paywall. Moreover, I expect an enormous donation from each and every one of you on, on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. No amount is too large. So dig deep, take out all your money, take out a credit card or 10 and give me everything and then I won't regret it. You might. So thank you very much everybody. Um, goodbye and look forward to the next video. Post your comments below. Toodle pip.